We're very happy to have Eileen Sweetman share her memories of life in Lusk. She was a member of the Kelly family who lived at the square in older times. The family were noted for sporting endeavours and lively conversation regarding politics, culture and the happenings in the village. Growing up in Lusk in the early 40s, I was born at the square in Lusk in 1937 at Kelly's Corner where my father, Pat Kelly from Cardoff, had a bicycle and electrical shop. And my mother, Rose Brogan from the Commons, had a tobacconist and sweet shop which were a big part of the community. I still meet people in Lusk today who tell me that my father was the person who brought electricity to their homes and it always makes me smile. Lusk has changed so much over the past 70 years, but I suppose that's progress. And while progress brings many positive changes, it is important to remember how things used to be in our lovely village. Lusk was a great place to grow up and I am blessed with many fond memories. Outside our house was always a hive of activity. When a big football match or hurling match from Croke Park was broadcast on the radio, my father would put a large speaker out the window of the workshop, and lots of people from the area would congregate on the grass verge outside our house, which is now Murray's car park, to enjoy the game and the ban- partake in the banter. After the game, many stayed on to indulge in pitch and toss, a gambling game on the toss of a coin, or came into our house for a game of cards. Our door was always open, and characters who passed through our home always had a story to share. Beyond our own house, Lusk had a number of places that were very important to us locals. We didn't need to venture very far because everything we needed was right there. One must remember this was before supermarkets arrived. There were 17 small shops and businesses in Lusk and they all seemed to survive well. Some shopkeepers delivered to Cardoff, Colcott and Ballybockle on horse-drawn vehicles. And many a fine Saturday I remember setting off out the country with Johnny Corrie from Mackey's Butchers on Post Office Road on these deliveries. Today we think of the Carnegie Library on the Green as a place for classes and community gatherings, but then it was used extensively. It was the hub of the social scene in the village, and the Green was alive with dances, cailies and concerts, and even though the facilities were very basic, we made the best of it and as a result had some wonderful times there and lovely memories to look back on. At the square there was a sail yard, complete with sail ring and tiered seating, and numerous cattle pens. For children it was a great place to gather and while away the hours. When the sheep and cattle sails were on, we spent many happy days there in wonderment, fascinated by the auctioneer's electric tongue and speedy sails pitch. When the sails were not on, we used the sail yard as a glorious playground and we produced and directed our own concerts and shows. Lusk provided healthy pickings for children and we also played in the grounds of the old church and scaled the wall to steal apples and pears from Dan Sherry's orchard where many a fine chase ensued. But we were all good runners in those days. In the winter time, we had slides on the road from Jerry Clinton's house down to Murray's Corner or from Chapel Road down to the village store on Main Street, our very own little winter Olympics. Sport was a big thing in Lusk. While there were no dressing rooms, clubhouses or fancy pitches like there are now, we did have a wonderful handball alley which was built by the men of Lusk in the early 30s beside the old soccer club. Sadly, it has gone now, but it delivered lots of fun and gave us great skills while it lasted. Most summer evenings, we all gathered gathered at the football field over at Rahaney Roundabout, where hurlers, footballers and camogie players all trained together. Many a time we got in the way of a very fast travelling slither or hurling ball. I also remember my mother and Tom Monks from Berwick Road composing songs when our hurlers or footballers had a victory over neighbouring teams. The old school on the green had about 160 pupils, that's boys and girls. Can you believe there are nearly 1,000 pupils in the national school now? 
Back then there were only just two rooms upstairs for the girls and two downstairs for the boys. No water or heat and only two outside toilets. Imagine trying to explain this to children today, they would scarcely believe it. Inside we were nice and warm because for physical exercise pupils used to go out and gather sticks in the churchyard or in Hans Lane for the open fire. It might all seem very basic looking back, but some things were more sophisticated. For instance, back then we didn't go to the bank, the bank came to us. We had our own mobile bank. Every Wednesday, a bank official came all the way to Lusk by taxi from Balbriggan for a couple of hours. The bank rented a room in Kit Rogan's house beside the old post office, and all the banking was done there. Progress has meant that all this stopped many years ago, and now I suppose we are very lucky to have our ATMs and our credit union. Can you imagine asking a bank to come to you nowadays? Not all progress is good, you see. Lusk is now a bigger and better place than it was in the 1940s. But now, while we have more material things, we don't seem to have as much time. People are always very busy, so I think it's very important that we make an effort to know our neighbours and the history of the community we live in. I am very lucky to have lived in this village for so long and to have raised my own family on the loving doorstep where I was born. I still think Lusk is a great place to live, a little rural oasis on the edge of a great city. I am as proud to be a true blue Lusk person today as I was when I watched my father and mother place hurling and football trophies in the window of our little shop on the square many years ago. Fond memories indeed. Elaine Tinton or the Hinton Fane. There's no place like home.